I'm Stefan Lau. I'm a dedicated roaster. I've been that from, from the beginning of the lifespan of the bullet. What is an IBTS? So the IBTS is the infrared sensor that we have in the bullet so that we know at any point in time what the surface temperature of the beans are. Okay. In the beginning of the roast, we also know what the surface temperature of the drum will be in order to set the preheat temperature. Okay. And what does IBTS stand for? Yeah, it's infrared bean temperature sensor. Almost all other roasters, we have a normal temperature probe to actually sense the temperature in the bean mass or in the air inside the drum. With the infrared sensor, you can actually uh, give the true temperature of any surface within the roasting chamber. So the beans will always uh, be monitored with a real live temperature with the infrared sensor. And why, why does that matter? So it always matters to know exactly what the temperature of the beans are. And especially with the, with the bullet, it's a very nice feature to have to know exactly when, for example, we have the first crack of the beans, mm -hmm. as almost all beans crack uh, first time around 200 uh, Celsius degrees. So no matter what bat size you have in your bullet, it will always give the same crack temperature. So with normal bean probes, they go up and down. They go down with smaller batches and up with higher batches. So as a home roaster, you will be able always to identify uh, the true temperature and hence also when the first crack will come. Okay. And IBTS, is that not just like a flimsy, pointless, a high-tech addition to a sensor that already works, the probe? Well, you could say that, but it's not. It's not at all. It's actually a sensor that, that really gives you a true picture of your roasting profile. But of course, as with any other new additions to, to a, um, uh, a roasting session, the, the infrared bean probe will be uh, something new that you'll have to, to, to learn, but I'm pretty sure, just like myself, yeah. that you will be super happy for it because it gives consistency no matter what you're roasting. Okay, and you still have the probe, right? You still have the normal bean probe yes. with the turning point, as many roasters know it. Um, and this probe will also give the rate of rise which is a nice smooth curve of, of uh, what is happening uh, with the uh, temperature change per time. You can also have the rate of rise of the IBTS. And so, so we give all the tools that you can actually use today, but it's up to the roaster to actually pick what's uh, best for the roaster. Okay, so it's, it's, more, uh, it's more data, basically. It's more data... But it's not just data, it's important data. Okay. If you like consistency, you would like to see the, the uh, first crack happening, uh, 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 and it, especially when is it happening. So that gives you consistency. Okay. So, Stefan, you mentioned uh, surface temperatures yes. and batch sizes. Yes. Can you elaborate on that? How... How are those uh, related? Yes. So, so with the IBTS, we know exactly the surface temperature of, of the beans, no matter if the uh, roasting chamber is full of beans or there's only a few for like with sample roasting. And that's the interesting part and where it really matters that we have infrared surface temperature measurement compared to the normal bean sensor because the normal bean sensor will be dependent on how many beans will actually touch the little uh, temperature stick 
sitting in, in the bean mass while they are rotating. So with fewer beans touching the bean sensor, it will sense a, a lower temperature compared to the real temperature. Uh, I noticed that uh, like roasters today have more and more sensors in them. Is a higher number of sensors ne- necessarily better? Or is it the performance of those sensors, mm. how they work, is that what matters? Or can you say because it has a high number of sensors, then it's it's good? Yeah. Of course, the performance of, of every single sensor is, is uh, vital. I mean, if we speak with data, yeah, uh, we need to rely on those data. So, so they need to be high quality. And so more sensors is not necessarily better. It's it's all about where you sense the temperature. Yeah. Does it matter uh, to you what what the temperature will be at the at the exit of the drum? Then you put a sensor there. Um, so, but again, it 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 what does matter is actually what these every single bean is experiencing, and not necessarily what the air temperature will be at the exit. Just to say one thing, mm-hmm. because the airflow will also change the sensed temperature from a bean probe. Just like a, a normal oven in the kitchen, if you have uh, a hot air ovens, yeah, uh, the food in the oven will sense a much higher temperature. Maybe you even burn the surface if you have a very high airflow with with, with uh, higher temperatures. So, so the airflow matters, whereas the infrared sensing, infrared beam uh, sensors do not care about the air temperature. It's only a matter uh, of the surface temperature. So the IBTS sensor, where on the bullet is that positioned and how how does the construction work? Yeah. So the IBTS is sitting just right behind the display in the bullet. So it's kind of the top part of the front. So it's overlooking, I mean, at an at a, at a angle into the uh, empty drum in the beginning to have a very nice picture of the heat distribution in, in, in the drum. And later on, it's overlooking the whole bean mass rotating. And the, uh, the way it works uh, is that in order to measure the real true temperature, you need to have open air, so to speak, between the IBTS and the single beans. So in order to have that, you need a hole in the drum. And what would happen if you didn't do anything else would be that the the hot air would come in and destroy the sensor through that hole. Mm. So what we do is that we uh, put a little IBTS fan just behind the sensor, pushing in ambient surrounding temperature into the drum in order to keep the heat barrier in the drum. And that's pretty clever, actually, because in that way, you also keep the dust from from uh, deposit, deposit on, on the sensor surface. <laughs>